Hey guys, Red Dragon here, and we're in a time lapse video for Transport Fever 2. For those of you who have never played this game, it's essentially a transport tycoon game where you build out rail lines, truck lines, shipping lines, airlines, all sorts of stuff to move people and goods across the map. And in this latest iteration of the game, Transport Fever 2, there's a lot more terrain and customization you can do to the map itself. And when you add that to the great mod community that exists on the Steam Workshop, I decided I wanted to try to do some pretty interesting building and, you know, just scenery in the game. And this was my first big attempt at it. I made a smaller attempt um, with a little state park lighthouse point near one of the cities that you see pictures of on screen right now. But I wanted to try something new and a little different and it looks hard, but really it's just painting the map. I wanted to do a golf course. So here we are. This is from a stream from about a month ago when we did this. You can see me going through and checking some stuff real quick uh, before we get started. Just kind of scrolling around, checking on the map, making sure there's no major issues I need to deal with traffic or train wise. And we decide on our location for the golf course. It is near the city of Spartansburg which is, at the time of building this, the biggest city on the map. Looking up at my little reference map here of a fake golf course, just so I can kind of get an idea of how holes are laid out and where sand traps and all that stuff goes. And then we test out what brushes we want for the different textures. I go with the kind of uh, scuffed up sand, the footprints in the sand, sand for the sand pits. I go with the cut, gr cut medium and cut light green grass for the green and the fairway. And then you can see me kind of do a practice hole over here. So we lay down our fairway, we lay down our green, and then we lay out some sand traps. Now, I tried to dimple the sand traps, you know, make them sunk into the ground like sand traps typically are. The problem is because I'm on a tropical island map and I'm so close to sea level with this golf course that if I dig down too far, I hit water. And you'll see me try to re repeat it several times when I'm building the golf course, but eventually I just decide the sand traps are fine just being sand without having a divot, big divot in them to show them dug into the earth. So we just paint them on and they look pretty from a distance. So I'm trying to figure out how to start this golf course and I figure I need a point of reference. So I build out a road off this freeway interchange and using a mod, build a little parking lot and you're gonna see me plop some, I think it's, level, yeah, commercial buildings, level four commercial buildings from the middle of the century, so like 1940s-ish, I guess. Um, eventually, I'm gonna go through and spend way too much time trying to pick the right building. So we build a little kind of resort, clubhouse, restaurant, something, something. Uh, it's, it's gonna look interesting, but we do more with it later. This is just kind of a placeholder so that I can have an idea of where the golf course starts and ends. So we're laying down our first hole here and I'm using the cut light green grass and I realize as I'm doing this, or no, I'm sorry, the cut medium grass, I realize that medium grass is the color of the grass for the whole area. So I need to do something to help make the fairways stand out. So I get the dark uh, uncut grass and I lay a bunch of that out around it and I realize, you know what, it's going to be easier if I just put that down as a kind of a base coat uh, and then paint the holes on top of it. And it ends up looking really, really good in the end. So we got our first hole here done. It's a very small, simple hole. Uh, I should probably point out I don't play golf, so I don't know what golf courses are supposed to feel or look like play-wise. So keep that in mind as you watch me build this thing. It's definitely, I don't know if this is even a playable regulation course, but you know what? It looks good and that's mainly what I care about is it looking good. So trying to do some details, trying to find something that makes it look like there's a actual hole in the ground. Um, now watching back, I, I'm suddenly struck with so many different ideas of ways I could have made that happen. But for now, from a distance, just having the grass painted looks good. So we lay in hole number two and I suddenly realize I should probably map out where the holes go um, before I just start painting them in so that I know that by the time I get to the end, I have 18 holes. So there's hole one and two and then this big long one's hole 18. 
and I'm gonna go in and fill in a whole bunch of other holes and eventually realize I don't have enough room for 18 holes in the area I've painted. I expand out the golf course a little bit and it will eventually come back with 18 holes. All right, here we are with the rough layout of the course finished. Uh, I was able to squeeze 18 holes. I had to expand the initial footprint of the course a little bit, but it's all well and good. We're gonna start filling these in with the light green grass for our fairway. And then we can get to the detail work. And you can see I kind of marked in where I plan to have a water feature. I think that's hole nine of the course. I wanted there to be one hole where you had to actually drive your golf ball across a water feature. So that actually ends up looking really, really nice. Uh, you can see up here is where I extend the course up toward this, uh, into this valley where this refinery is. All right, and here we go, finishing up hole number 18. I'm gonna zoom out, take a look at it, starting to look like a golf course now that we got the different color grasses. So I go in, starting with hole number two here, and start painting in the detail. Now, uh, you can see I'm using the light green cut grass for the green, uh, the medium green cut grass for the fairway, and I decided that I wanted the T to be distinguished, so you can kind of tell what order the course is played in based on where the T's are, kind of you go from this spot to this spot to this spot. Plus I just wanted to add a little variety, so I use the, um, I believe it's the alpine grass, the cut alpine grass, to kind of signify where the teeing off point for each hole is. Um, it doesn't look 100% great, but I figured if that was a spot where a lot of people are going to be standing and waiting for their turn to tee off. Uh, maybe you have some friends with you that maybe aren't playing, but they're hanging out watching. It's going to get a little more worn down, so that's my excuse for it being uh, a different color. And as I go, I make minor adjustments as I look at my golf course map and kind of think, okay, if I were a course designer, why did I shape this hole this way? I kind of trim up and change up how some of the holes look. Uh, for example, there's no reason for the fairway to be that fat, that close to the um, tee. There's no reason for it to be that wide where it is. And I decide in that open spot, I'm gonna put a water feature eventually. So it works. So another note I want to point out is how I chose where to put sand pits in these holes. Um, as, as I was looking at the map of the golf course, I was kind of realizing that sand traps go in very specific places on a lot of fairways. They typically go around the edges of the hole. So to the far left or the far right of the hole and they typically go on the wide part or just past the inside part of a dog leg in the course. So you can see this little sand pit I have here as I pan the camera around insanely. It's on that wide outside section of that dog leg. And I kind of figured as I studied more and more of the different holes uh, that I was referring to, it seems like sand traps are there to punish you for taking too big of a risk or making too bad of a shot. 
i.e. on this dog leg here, if you took the dog leg too wide, you could end up in the sand pit and you'll see I'm gonna put another sand pit down once I'm done creating this little water feature that is near the green, but it's it's if you hit the ball too, too wide and too far, you didn't hit the green, you end up hitting a sand pit. So I dig this little water feature out. I decide to use the uh, dirty water paint tool as opposed to digging down to the water level because this wouldn't be beautiful turquoise um, sea water. It would be dingy pond water. So I went with dingy pond water and I used the corn and wheat uh, paint tools to kind of cover up those steep sides. And they only really work when you're zoomed in real close and the grass renders, but it looks really, really good to me. So we're keeping it get away with a little bit of terrain terraforming here but not here you can see I'm starting to hit that water line and it, you know the game does its weird coastline mechanic and I'm like nah I'm not for that today and then we get back to detailing the rest of the course I pull out a truck asset and plop it on the green for a minute just so I can see if this golf course is remaining to scale uh, I was afraid I was making it way too humongous for what normal golf courses end up looking like. And I realized that actually, no, this is not too out of scale based on the size of the people and the vehicles. Um, compared to the city, it's humongous, but I think that's more of a problem with how cities uh, are scaled in the game, uh, size-wise. But hey, whatever, it looks good. And that's my main concern. So we're cutting out these two holes here kind of changing up their shape so that I can put in on yet another water feature. And this is the hole where you have to tee across this pond uh, to get to the green. And I just thought that was a cool little extra bit of detail. I'm gonna shut up and let you guys watch while I dig out this water feature and finish up the rest of the greens and sand pits and if there's some comment I feel like I need to make I will hop back in but enjoy the time lapse until we get to the next big project.
All right, so we finished detailing all the holes and it was at this point that I was starting to get really excited and like, you know what, this is starting to look so much better than I planned it in my head. Uh, as you saw, we kind of trimmed up some of the holes, we added some space for trees around some of the holes, we broke up where the green isn't right next to the water features, we kind of added some roughage between on some of the holes. And we're going to add one more uh, pond here between holes, I believe this is hole 16 and 17. So we kind of throw in some of those reeds and corn and wheat uh, to help cover up any imperfections. And then we start adding trees. And I made sure to leave a lot of um, open green space for the trees and also uh, decided I wanted to make some golf cart paths around the resort so that we could actually set up a little truck line. And it was right about this time that we got the little local delivery trucks that look like little grounds maintenance vehicles. And I can't remember which ones they are. You'll see them on the stream here in a little bit. But I decided, you know what, we're gonna set up a line where two or three of those are driving around. Uh, since they don't have a golf cart, obviously, we'll use that and kind of make believe they're the golf course maintenance guys going around checking on stuff. Also, it gives us the opportunity to hop into the first person view and take a look at the golf course from eye level. So I decided to stop putting in trees and put in the roads before I put in the trees, which ended up being not a bad idea. Uh, and I just kind of laid the roads out how I thought people would, what would be most convenient for people in golf carts to get at least, if not directly to the tee for each hole, at least be able to drive around the course in the order that you would play. So you can see we go up up to holes three, four, five, and then back down for six, seven, and eight. And then we make a perimeter road that goes around. We decide we're not gonna cut the road too close to that freeway off ramp. And then we end up back at hole 18 and spit out into the parking lot. And then we're gonna create some connecting roads in between, again, so that the players can drive uh, within reasonable walking distance of each tee. So our golf course is gonna get broken up a little bit by these roads, but it actually, once the trees are in and a couple other details are in, it actually looks really, really nice. And I'm kind of going through checking the play order and decide I need to create a driving path so that they can go around in a loop. Because whole 16, 16, 17, and 18 is a weird series to play now that I'm looking at it uh, in the you know with hindsight. But we start painting in trees and this is a tropical map, so it's kind of weird personally for me, for where I live, to see a bunch of palm trees around a golf course, but I guess if you're on a tropical island or maybe Hawaii or down in Florida, this is absolutely what golf courses look like, so I guess it isn't that weird. And now the trees are starting to get on there, I am, I was so happy, like I was telling chat uh, on the Twitch stream that this, this is probably up to this point one of my favorite projects I'd ever done in a game like this, whether it be City Skylines or Transport Fever or Sim City. This is one of my favorite little scenery, just nonsense projects. It doesn't make me money, it doesn't do anything except look pretty, and I am so happy about it. I get distracted by a bit donation and then get back to work, and it's coming together. And then once we get all the trees in, I decide, you know what, we're going to put a big, a nice big lake uh, up front here. I, and for this lake, I decide we will dig down to water level and use the nice turquoise water uh, because this is a country club. This is like our big main entrance lake. So why not make it look pretty? Uh, in order to change it up a little bit, I do test some different brush colors uh, to make it look a little bit more like an inland lake. I try the riverbed, I try gravel, I try a bunch of different stuff, and I think I end up deciding on gravel. Uh, now that I'm watching this back, I probably should have gone with the riverbed to make it look like a little more dark blue water, but you know what? It works. I accidentally paint over one of my uh, holes there with the grass tool. Go back, clean it up. And yeah, that looks like a golf course. And then I decide I gotta mess with it even more just to make it look a little deeper than it is. And I think that's where we ended up. Oh, nope, I kept going. Uh, I'm trying to remember where the two different streams split up. I decided to add some details in each of the tees. So I add a, I think that's supposed to be a parking lot, uh, paid parking lot fair sign, but it works really well to be like your 
a hole marker, you know, this is hole one, this is hole two. I put some benches for people to sit and wait for their turn to tee off. I make sure the different tees and holes are separated by trees so that you, you know, you're forced to go through and play in the order that it's supposed to be played in. And yeah, it just, it, as, as I add more and more detail, it just starts to look really, really good. Alright, so we got all those details on all the holes, and now I'm setting up kind of a test for the ground maintenance vehicle path. And I'm deciding, I'm putting a little, uh, I have this mod that has road signs, and I'm using the kind of, I don't know if you can see which ones I'm clicking on down there, but they're the, the road sign that says, look, there's a stop, or there's a parking area, or there's a turn off to the left or to the right, and I'm using that to indicate where each hole is. And then I get a couple of these uh, little maintenance vehicles and I set them up on this line and I have them driving around in the order that one would play on the course. So obviously numerical order of the holes. And I realized I should probably have uh, named the waypoints the different holes just so, you know, just so it makes sense and I'm happy. But yeah, we put those vehicles on the line, make sure the line's all set up. Uh, I realized that the line is actually not going to work because it needs two stations, not one station and a bunch of signals. So I fixed that just, just so the line will work. And I just realized that the other reason I'm getting a warning at the top of the screen is because those are delivery vehicles, not passenger vehicles. So I was using the wrong stations, change out the stations, and now I try to get in a plane and get some screenshots. But we will jump forward to the next day's work on the golf course. All right, here we are on the second stream of the golf course, and I decide we need to start adding those little extra details to really make this thing kind of belong on the map. And I decide the first thing we're gonna do is add a very snobby uh, wrought iron and brick uh, fence around the course, uh, especially on the front part where it looks, where you know it's visible to the public. And as we get back here toward this refinery, we switch to a not a keep out government secret chain link fence, but kind of a hog wire like, hey, you're now on property that isn't public fence, if that makes sense. Uh, I kind of expand the fence up the hillside there so we can build something there a little later. Accidentally delete a field that I didn't want to delete, but you know what? I decide, screw it, we're going to keep building fence here. And we accidentally delete another field I didn't want to delete, but hey, what happens happens. And we finish our fence up, keeping it in line with the road as much as possible. And before you know it, boom, high class country club in the mountains. Finish up this last little segment of fence here, bingo. And then I think I decide to work on some footpaths, yes, some footpaths, because yes, you can drive to each tee, but a lot of people like to walk and play. I don't know if that's, you know, most people or some people, but it's a thing. So I decided to add some concrete footpaths for the areas where the golf cart carts couldn't necessarily get to, or just to connect holes that, you know, it would take you too long to drive around on a golf cart if you didn't want to. So I'm just connecting maybe the green from the previous hole to the tee of the next hole. Uh, I'm adding, you know, if you tee off at one end, you need to walk up to the green if you're not using a golf cart. So I kind of create those paths. And I think I also create paths that allow you to walk around the different water features as well. And again, I tried to put a bridge in here and it doesn't work, unfortunately, without looking ridiculous. Um, but anyway, essentially my, my thought process for most of this build was what would, what would make most sense and look the most pleasing to the eye? You know, why, why does the path go this way? Well, because you need to get from here to here for this reason. It's, they're not, they're not just randomly placed. There is some, some amount of logical thought put into it, even though it may not look like it at times.
All right, walking paths are in and now it is time to go way too heavy on the signage. Um, I did go a little heavy handed on the signage just because I figured that it would be nice to, whether it be, you know, if I was streaming this game and needed to leave for a little bit, I could put this as the be, be right back screen of, you know, the little maintenance carts driving around. But I do go a little overboard with the signage. I'm putting, you know, yield signs uh, wherever pedestrian paths cross the road from one side to the other. I'm putting stop signs at all the three-way stops. I'm putting, you know, your hole is here markers. If there's a spot, and I'm putting them as signals so I can mark the uh, line through them if I want to. There's a couple spots that doesn't work because there are too many signals too close to each other. And then these assets can be placed individually like you see here. I'm going around and kind of fixing up where the signals couldn't be that close together. But it's, it's maybe a little bit excessive, but you know what? It ended up looking pretty good in the end. So I'm happy about it. And then we go and completely rebuild this line for no reason other than my own personal satisfaction because I am a lunatic. And then I think what I do is I have them go around the course in chronological order of the holes, but I also add in a few waypoints to make sure they, they take a path that makes sense and don't turn around in the middle of a path if they can help it. So I'm kind of imagining, you can see me with my mouse kind of imagining, okay, if I were playing the course, I'd park here, walk here, go back to my car, move it here. I, I put way too much thought into this, but that's part of what makes it fun for me. And I think our last stop we make is a, yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm gonna build a little maintenance station, kind of like, it might maybe, maybe some water tanks or maybe, you know, where the, all the maintenance equipment and fertilizers and ex, extra machinery and stuff are stored. So you'll see that here in a minute. All right, now here is a part that was interesting. I tried to make a swimming pool for this resort. And long story short, I'm gonna look for a mod for a swimming pool because I know it exists, I've seen it. But yeah, this just did not work out well. And no matter what I tried, I, smoothing it, even repainting the surface, it just did not look right. It did not look like a swimming pool, it looked like a crappy pond, if I'm being honest. So I decided to scratch that. Well, not really. I tried to do a pool deck with the thing, but it, yeah, it just doesn't work. And I spend way too much time trying, time trying to make it work. But then I decided, you know what? Let's just let's just put some detail around the um, resort so it's not just sitting on a grass field. So we lay down some of this uh, hexagonal cobblestone. Looks really nice. I think I decided to put some assets, yeah, some hedges around the side. It actually ends up looking really nice. And then, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm like hesitating. I'm trying to remember what it is I did because this was done so long ago. And I'm annoyed that I didn't record the, or, you know, make this video sooner. I think it's at this point I decide we are going to make that other building a restaurant or a cafe on the bottom and then like the VIP or the club, actual golf clubhouse uh, on the upper floors. And then the other big, the bigger building on the right will be the, um, like the resort, like, you know, where you sleep. But the, the, the other buildings, the cafe, the bar, the lounge, you know, the, the recreational facility, whereas the bigger building is the, 
uh, you know, a living space, if you will. So yeah, we're gonna make this a little outdoor cafe. I spend some time placing some tables, some chairs, uh, and then I decide I don't like it. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, there we go. Place some tables, place some chairs, and I really, really want to put umbrellas over some of these tables, and for some of them it works, and for some of them it doesn't. Uh, the umbrellas collide with the tables, so you have to adjust the height and width and uh, elevation of the umbrellas, and it just, it was an unnecessary amount of work for what I got, but it ended up looking really good. So you can see me here trying to make an umbrella fit. You know, I'm trying to rotate it, lift it, you know, make it dimensionally, make it bigger and wider so it doesn't collide with anything. Uh, you see, I have to make things really super huge for whatever reason, so they don't, you know, the, the, the whole model isn't what's colliding, it's the, like, mounting point to the earth, I guess is the way I could describe it that's mounting, or that's colliding. So, you know, I try and try and try to get an umbrella that looks dimensionally correct, but also looks, you know, looks like it belongs but doesn't collide. And I end up with those two umbrellas, and then I try to do it for the smaller tables, and I just eventually give up, because I can't make it look like those umbrellas belong. So I go to placing so many chairs, and I try, you can't really see because it's sped up, but I try to make it so that the chairs aren't perfectly symmetrical or perfectly square with the table at all times. You know, nothing in this world is quite that perfect. Let me place some extra chairs along the back wall here, because why not? A couple extra tables. And then I imagine that one door is entering the restaurant or entering the cafe and the other door is out to the veranda or the seating area, whatever you call it. So yeah, we put up this nice kind of picket fence and then I decide let's try to do some planters with some trees. But then again, the collision fat thing comes and bites me in the butt and I know there's mods that you can place trees without them colliding, I think. But at the time I didn't have them so we go back and try to do it a different way. As you place trees closer together, they kind of turn the ground to dirt. So I kind of use that to my advantage. We're gonna paint in some dirt under these trees and it kind of takes me a minute to get the cobblestone to change because it's it's not like a true paint tool. You kind of have to play around with it a little bit to get exactly what you want it to look like. But yeah, it looks pretty dang good once it's all said and done. Uh, we put the little open sign out. Uh, put a guy that looks a little bit like a like waiters and then we go and place a whole lot of people just to give life to the scene you know and then i find this little guy that little green shirted guy with the yellow ascot and there's there's some projects we're going to use him for in the future uh i will i will keep those a secret for now so yeah placing some people uh, placing some of those green shirted guys again if you get the if you were there and you get the joke you get the joke if not you know such is life it'll be explained later uh kind of varied up sometimes it's a big group of people sometimes it's i think i did one or two people just sitting on their own enjoying their meal or their coffee or whatever uh plopped a couple people on the golf course just for fun and i think that's where i wrapped it up i, th I don't think i added anything else um, and I think that's where the golf course still is. I don't think I did any other work. Oh, nope, I'm lying. I did the, um, the maintenance facility. All right, so now we're going to do this little maintenance facility. It's nothing special. I just want something, something that shows that, look, it's a country club, but you still got to take care of the things you got to take care of. So we build some of these, uh, silos, or I guess they are not silos. They're, um, water tanks or fuel tanks. Just kind of imagining that maybe it's fertilizer and water or, you know, just something. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make something that looks pretty, you know, pretty good for a kind of a golf course maintenance area. I'm not trying to overdo anything here. I said the guy who spent three and a half hours building a golf course. I know. So yeah, we make a little concrete path. I think I eventually plop some of the maintenance vehicles there. We have a little, you know, a little guard shack with a uh, barricade so that if the country cup's closed or it's after hours, we can close it. And I think that is actually where I left it for this video. 
other than just messing around with props. Anyway, so yeah, that's the golf course. It ended up looking so much better than I thought it was going to be initially. And I'm super proud of the way it turned out and it got me thinking about other projects I wanted to do. And actually we're in the middle of building uh, a, power, a nuclear power plant right now. And based on some of the assets I was able to get a hold of on the Steam Workshop and some of the in-game assets that are now ploppable because of uh, some Workshop mods, I decided that I had the assets to try to build a, a facsimile, if you will, a artist rendition of the Chernobyl nuclear power station. So I'll post the time lapse for that here in the next couple days as well. But let me know what you think. What do you think of the golf course? Do you think I, you know, it looks good? Do you think it's ridiculous? Do you think that I'm insane for spending that amount of time on anything uh, in this game? But hey, let me know what you think. I'm curious to know. Um, there's definitely going to be more stuff like this coming. I really enjoy Transport Fever and I've got a really interesting idea for a series I want to do that kind of bounces between Twitch and YouTube and where we build on a megalomania, megalomaniac map. But until then, I've been Red Dragon. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you want to talk more Transport Fever, consider joining the Discord server. Link is in the description below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.